Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are looking around uh, the interior of a spaceship. We are looking at Lunar Flight, and Lunar Flight has been around for a few years, and it was one of the earliest games to support VR, but uh, it kind of also was one of the, because it was early, it didn't really get updated to all the latest updates to hardware in terms of head tracking, and finally, the developer, Sean, uh, Shovsoft or whatever, he has released a beta of Oculus Rift support, which, uh, well, with a bit of hacking, can be made to work with my Vive. So yeah, this is pretty cool, looking around at all these asteroids that are my friends in space. Uh, the game is called Lunar Flight, but I start out in an asteroid field, and there is the moon. The moon that brings us so much profit, uh, promise of profit and crashing and flying spaceships. So let's begin. The way this works, of course, is you look at the control and you push the button on the gamepad to select. Um, it can use gamepad, it can use an X-52. I'm going to try flying around this Lunar Hills map. And, uh, well, there are four maps in the base game. So here we go, main power, turn on. Let's just take a look around this thing. Here we got landing pad. There's the power button there, big red. Ooh, it hums into life like a sleeping giant awaking. Or like a giant bug, anyway. The lunar module was often compared to a bug, even though it was called things like eagle. So I'm going to select this mission. We have various options. I've not been able to get the cargo mission, the car, sorry, the lost cargo missions working right now. The Something in the audio means I can't hear the transponder. It's probably just related to the transition to VR. Or it could be because I don't have a <laughs> properly supported headset. We have these nice buttons up here to select the overhead display and we can actually just turn off the overhead display if we want to get the extra the extra view of the landscape around us. And given that you know flying towards the target involves pushing the nose down, it quite often I wish I could turn that off more quickly. Okay. So I'm just holding the right trigger here to control my vertical throttle. We're raising up look at this landscape around us. We have a little thriving moonar sorry, lunar, not moonar. This is a lunar flight, not a moonar flight. There we'll pitch the nose down and start moving towards our destination. We have a fairly heavy load of cargo. If you look out just the right there, you can see the shadow of my spacecraft. And of course, lunar flight is absolutely playable, even if you don't have a headset. Anyway, I pitch down like 40 degrees, heading towards this target. You can see up the top, I have a velocity vector camera on that screen, but that screen does kind of get in the way Good news is that because it's VR, I can kind of stretch my head around, or I can just turn off the overhead display. There, we can see it there. The, there is a base inside a valley over there. Over where? Over there, I say. Okay, so we're kind of skimming the surface. You can see the detail in the lunar regolith. The landscapes are... they're kind of, you know, desolate. But, uh, you know, it's always easy to model the moon. After all, how many people have really seen the moon up close? There's like a dozen of them, and half of them are dead. So, hey, it's very easy to make games set on other worlds. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so I'm pitching back now, using the main engine now to slow down. Now, because I've upgraded this spaceship a bit, I do have some rotation damping. So rotation damping is an option that you can pick up. I've also upgraded the engines a couple of times, upgraded the fuel efficiency, upgraded the reaction control thrusters. But we can talk more about upgrades later. I can see a shadow of a spacecraft moving across. Can I see the thing that is making that shadow? There are other spacecraft flying around. They are drones, and you can shoot them out of the sky if you want. Their combat is an option. Although I'm not sure, I don't think multiplayer works right now in VR. No, there's another shadow there. I don't, I just, I think these things must fly really high because I can't see them. I'm just skimming along at about 100 feet above the surface because I'm a proper badass lunar lander. Lunar lander. I keep saying lunar when I mean to say lunar. I have been totally kerbalified. This is terrible. 
Could you imagine how embarrassing it would be if I turned up at the a lunar planetary science conference and kept on referring it to the moon as the moon? No, 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 no. Okay, I'm just using the RCS thrusters to push this in ever so carefully, ever so gently onto the pad. I like to fly with exact landings required. It means I have to put the put the various landing legs onto the actual four landing pads. There we go. Just take a look out the window here. So I can keep myself on target and we get the little targeting system coming up just so I can make sure that I'm right on the dot, so to speak. Literally get the dots in the circles. And now land gently down. There we go. Ha! Way more accurate than Neil Armstrong or any of those other actual professional lunar module pilots. Well, technically they were mission commanders. The lunar module pilot didn't actually perform the landing. It's complicated like that. Anyway, deliver the fuel, sorry, deliver the load, the cargo, and I should get some money. There we go. Get 15,000 credits for my, for my hard work. And now I have more money. I can now refuel as well. All the yellow light showing that I'm refueling, obviously, because you want to make sure that people know that rocket fuel is getting loaded. So yeah, uh, upgrades are possible. If you, as you get experience, you go up levels and you can get access to things. I haven't upgraded the RCS, but I shall do that, and I shall probably upgrade the the stability control system as well. That leaves me thirteen thousand intergalactic space bucks. It's not really intergalactic; it's lunar space bucks. Uh, and let's go to another map, because it does say lunar flight, but they do have Mars. And Mars is way harder. The gravity on Mars is significantly higher, so if you try flying without upgrading your spaceship, you will actually have some serious trouble even getting off the pad. Okay, so let's try another mission cut type. As I said, uh, the... The lost cargo doesn't seem to be working properly for me, but there is data survey missions. These require you to fly into a little circular, spherical aura of data collectedness and collect the data before bringing it back. So off we go, and there is no time to waste here. You have to go much faster on Mars because you have less time to loiter. I'll look at the solar panels there, covered in dust. Man, you'd think that my flying over the top with my rocket engines would generate a bit of a bit of um, exhaust gas that would blow those panels clear. Okay, so it looks like what we're looking for is sitting on top of that mountain peak. If you can see the, you can see the little screen at the top there. That is showing where I am headed, and look at my speed getting much higher, faster, because of course, you know, if you pitch the thing over then you're having to burn harder to overcome gravity and therefore on Mars you will end up moving a lot faster a lot more quickly but of course you'll be burning fuel more quickly oh joy and the other thing about Mars is there are epic dust storms to make your day really bad I pitch this thing oh and we've run into a dust storm and I can't see anything I mean I can see sort of things the biggest problem with the dust storms is actually the graphical, like, I don't know, depth aliasing or something. I'm not sure what the technical term is, but it makes it look... Because the way clouds, volumetric clouds are done, you'll sometimes think there are false landscapes around you. And you will get very scared you're about to crash into them. I think I am... Well, I'm actually going upwards really fast. That's what, what's going on here. Where's my target? 200 meters out. You know what? I should pitch the nose down. Because we're going too, too, too fast. There we go. You'll notice, incidentally, that the HOTAS the pilot is using looks an awfully lot like a SciTech X-52. I, uh, I would love to have flown with that, but I've been having some issues with it because, you know, Windows 10 hates it. It is actually possible to get it working, but it's it's very uh, frustrating. When I did Asteroid Day, I unplugged all my gear and took it to the Academy of Science, and clearly something is not in the same USB port, and the joystick doesn't want to talk to the computer anymore. Okay, 
Where is the green aura of awesome? We're gonna wait and acquire! 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 Now slow the heck down while I'm inside this beautiful aura of data magic. Come on, come on, come on! Data acquired! Now we gotta get home. We have slightly more than 50% fuel left, which is a good sign. We just need to be as neat on the return as we were on the way out here, so just basically pitch the thing back and that will start accelerating backwards and now I'm going to yaw. And this is probably not totally obvious to everyone because it looks like I'm kind of rolling but really I'm yawing so that when I come around I should be facing the correct direction and the damping is actually stopping me rotating which is... I'm not quite, not quite used to that. Okay, there's the target. And we are slightly off axis here, so let's adjust that. And we are going up 12 meters per second. Now I gotta find out where. Now, of course, that's. Oh, look, that's like totally off center. Wait a second. I gotta figure this out. Oh, man. 41% fuel. We are doing just fine. We're totally gonna get back. Now, I just need. Destination. So, obviously it's called Lunar Flight. It was originally... Oh wait! Oh crap, I'm going the wrong way. I'm going to go past this thing and I'm going at 17 meters per second. Pitch up! Pitch up! Earth! <laughs> Mars Mountain! Dead ahead! No! No, 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 no! Oh dear. Yes, um... I'm clearly screwing this up here. I, I think I'm, I'm not going to crash though. That's the good news. Good news is no crashing will happen today because I have arrested the velocity and now I just need to turn around and get back on course for a landing here. 21% though. That is kind of getting... That's getting worrying. Okay, where is the landing pad? Where is it? Oh, I'm going upwards. I don't need me to be going upwards. I need to be going downwards. There it is there. Okay. Okay. I think we're going to do this. We're fine. We're... Uh-oh. Beep, beep. That means I'm down to 15% fuel. Just got to put it down here. Being very careful to adjust my throttle. Flying on vapors. Martian fuel vapors. Oh, okay. Just keep that going. Looking for my velocity vector here. Uh, there we go. See it bringing the velocity vector in. Okay. Oh, we're totally on course. Now the hard part. <laughs> so 5% fuel. I keep thinking I'm going to make it, but I'm just going to get it right on those landing pads. Right on the landing pads. Right on the landing pads. 1%. No. No! 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 <laughs> Out of fuel! Oh! oh! And because I'm playing on the extra difficult setting, I have basically failed the mission because I didn't put the pat things exactly on the landing pads. Well, I guess the consolation prize is that I don't have far to walk home. <laughs> oh, this poor thing. Uh, we'll just have to get it towed to the nearest dealership and make everything work. So yeah, Lunar Flight it has a VR update that's kind of coming in, and you should check it out if you have a VR headset. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.